Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here at midday on Friday, January 22nd. Quite an exciting weather pattern going forward through the weekend and through next week. We have a very cold air mass moving into the Mid-Atlantic region, the Northeast U.S. for the upcoming weekend, kind of setting the stage for a winter storm that looks like it'll impact the Mid-Atlantic region from late Monday into Tuesday of next week. And there is a second storm threat that could come late next week, probably in the Thursday time frame. It's too early to say, however, how far to the north and east that particular storm system will come. If it were to come into the mid-Atlantic region, it could very well be an all-snow event, again, somewhere around the Thursday time frame, potentially significant as well. But there's a chance it get, gets suppressed to the south and east, as has happened many times this particular winter season. Let's start off by looking at a satellite imagery loop of the west coast and the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Why are we focus on this region? This little swirl in the clouds right here now approaching the California coastline actually represents the upper level, the location of the upper level disturbance that will set off the early week storm uh, for the mid-Atlantic region. This will slide all the way down the coast of California over the next 12 to 24 hours or so and then ultimately result in a low pressure area that heads to the Ohio Valley on Monday. A secondary low pressure area will form off the mid-Atlantic coastline by Tuesday. Snow, ice, and rain for the mid-Atlantic region. Again, it looks like later Monday into Tuesday. The second system, the potential system for later next week, actually is uh, now causing some uh, storminess over Alaska. Let's take a look at that right now. And here we go again with GeoColor, a satellite image band from NOAA's NESDIS organization. Let's kind of get a focus on where we are now. This is Alaska right here and the Aleutian Island chain right here. This area of clouds and kind of a rotation of the clouds right here, that actually is the location of the upper level disturbance that will uh, potentially bring a storm into the mid-Atlantic region, certainly the eastern U.S. later next week, maybe the Thursday time frame. So the bottom line here, the upper level disturbances associated with our storm threats for next week are really still far, far away. This is uh, so far out there, it's just too early to say exactly how far to the North Indies a potential late week storm will come next week. And the, uh, even the initial system now headed over California is still a long ways away, so there's still some details that have to be ironed out, but let's kind of go over that over the next few minutes here. Well, let's start off by looking at the 12Z operational run of the GFS, today's run, here we're looking at 500 millibar uh, vorticity fields, kind of a broader view that includes the Pacific Ocean all the way up to Alaska. I wanted to point out as we begin, this is the upper level disturbance that uh, represents the location of the energy that will set off low pressure that will have an impact in the mid-Atlantic region early next week, later Monday into the day on Tuesday. And here is the location of another very strong wave in the upper part of the atmosphere over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. Believe it or not, that is the system that uh, potentially represents a, a storm for the mid-Atlantic region late next week. Again, the Thursday time frame, a little too early to say, though, if it gets suppressed to the south of the mid-Atlantic region or if it comes full force all the way up. So let's just move forward now in time and watch the movement of these upper level vorticity maxima. Now when I talk about vorticity in the upper part of the atmosphere, I'm talking about a spin in the atmosphere generally associated with jet streaks and there tends to be divergence aloft just ahead of the vorticity maximum. When you have divergence aloft, typically have convergence near the surface and that leads to your upward motion, development of low pressure. So these spinning areas in the upper part of the atmosphere are where we kind of focus in for uh, hints as to where low pressure may form at the surface. Again, divergence out ahead of the vortmax, uh, aloft with convergence at the surface. 
and that could set off the development of low pressure. Indeed, both of these will set off formation of uh, low pressure or storms that will impact the eastern U.S. next week. Let's move forward here and watch what happens. This kind of rotates around again. California is going to get significant rain and snow from both of these systems over the next several days here, kind of breaking the dry spell that they've had and very heavy snowfall for the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada, Nevada over the next several days with both of these systems. Here we are now into the day on Sunday. The first system now over the southwestern U.S., the second system back over the west coast of Canada now. First system pushes into the central plains by early next week and comes far enough north that low pressure, the initial wave of low pressure at the surface, rides all the way up into the Ohio Valley. That will allow a little bit milder air to push into the I-95 corridor region. But very cold air to start uh, the week. Well, very cold air in place Monday morning with low dew points. Cold weekend coming up for places like Philly, D.C., New York City. And here is a wave number one that will uh, bring the winter storm to the Mid-Atlantic region later Monday into the day on Tuesday. Wave number two uh, kind of stretched out along the west coast of uh, the U.S. by early next week. Let's keep moving forward here. It goes wave number one right here, and then wave number two starts to take the similar path as that initial wave out into the central plains. But the last moment here on this particular run of the GFS, it goes towards the Ohio Valley, but then kind of uh, is shunted to the south and east down into the uh, Carolinas by, let's say, Thursday of next week. Depending on exactly how far north that system goes will dictate how much snow falls in the mid-Atlantic region for that second system and yet another wave off the west coast by the end of next week. All right, now let's talk about how this translates to sensible weather. They call it down at the uh, ground level where we all live, of course. Uh, we have a very cold air mass coming into the mid-Atlantic region of the northeast U.S. on the heels of a funnel passage late today. And by the way, that front can set off a few showers, uh, pretty much any kind of precipitation. It could be snow, snow pellets, otherwise known as grapple, uh, or rain late this afternoon, early this evening as a frontal system passes on through. And that will set the stage for a very cold weekend. Here we start off the day on Saturday. Strong northwest winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour in D.C., Philadelphia, New York City. Probably the coldest day of the winter so far. Highs will struggle to pass the freezing mark, for example, in Philly and New York City. Probably do no better than the, the middle 30s in D.C. on Saturday. Again, with a stiff wind out of the nor northwest. All backed up by strong high pressure over the Midwest. That high moves Overhead tomorrow night into Sunday morning, setting the stage for some teens as overnight lows in the suburbs of Philadelphia, for example. Really, suburban locations all along the D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor could drop into the uh, upper teens, maybe the lower 20s by Sunday morning. Strong, cold, high pressure in place. It'll be a very dry air mass as well with Arctic air characteristics. Then we'll have to watch late in the day on Sunday. There very well could be some snow shower activity late in the day on Sunday into Sunday evening in the D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor as kind of a, uh, a, a an upper-level disturbance out ahead of the main system comes into the mid-Atlantic region. It'll be weakening, so don't expect much, but don't be surprised if there are a few snow showers late in the day, Sunday, Sunday night. GFS is really not showing it, but I think... That threat is there. Then we get into the early morning hours on Monday. It looks like the commute in D.C. and certainly Philadelphia and New York City will be dry Monday morning. Probably no problems there. Then the precipitation arrives in the D.C. metro region during the afternoon, probably by evening in Philadelphia and New York City. Now it looks like this early week winter storm uh, most likely in the form of snow and ice north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. Certainly accumulations are on the table. 
of uh, at least a few inches, especially in the northern western of Philadelphia to upstate Pennsylvania. Actually, in central and northeastern PA, for example, there could be six or eight inches of snow out of the, this system. Can it be a blockbuster storm north of the Mason-Dixon line, let's say in the Philadelphia suburbs? Probably unlikely because of the mixing that will uh, most likely take place of ice, maybe even a little bit of rain at times, but I, I think north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, primarily looking at a snow and ice event uh, from late Monday into the day on Tuesday. In D.C., south of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, uh, could begin as ice, maybe even snow Monday afternoon. Uh, it looks like rain will get involved. Now, as that Ohio Valley system tends to weaken out and mid-Atlantic Coastal low takes over late Monday night, early Tuesday. Mixed precipitation in the D.C. metro region could change to snow in the latter stages of the storm. And, and there are uh, chances for some small accumulations in the D.C. metro region, certainly across the far northern and western suburbs. But again, it looks like a mixed bag of ice, uh, rain, maybe some snow at times. Uh, if the snow were to happen, probably most likely at the onset and maybe again in the latter stages. But again, north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border, primarily a snow and ice event. This is the forecast map for early Tuesday. The initial wave over the Ohio Valley, a secondary does try to form off the Mid-Atlantic coastline by early uh, Tuesday morning. That could pull some colder air to the south and east and hence the possibility of a change back to snow and ice in the D.C. metro region uh, sometime on Tuesday. But again, a decent snow for upstate Pennsylvania all the way across to New York City. By the way, this is the second system we'll be watching over the next several days come Tuesday morning. Again, given California a lot of rain in coastal areas, snow in the higher elevation areas of Sierra Nevada Mountains, for example. It's still lingering snow across uh, 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 Pennsylvania. Ice maybe near the southern border of Pennsylvania, the northern border of Maryland. Again, watch out for the possibility of a change back to something frozen. D.C. metro region as that low pressure area uh, off the mid-Atlantic coast line takes over during the day on Tuesday. It takes a little while for this system to wind down too. It may snow as late as late Tuesday in places like Philadelphia suburbs, New York City suburbs, upstate New Jersey. This is all the way into uh, early Tuesday night with still kind of a lingering precipitation in upstate Pennsylvania and New, uh, New York City. Again, absolutely accumulations of at least a few inches on the table. Suburbs of Philadelphia, for, for example, suburbs of uh, New York City, and several inches upstate Pennsylvania. Here comes that second system. We'll be watching very closely over the next several days. Again, still uh, several days away here, and, and the northward extent is still in question. Notice this strong high by the middle of next week. I'm pretty excited about this late week threat because if it were to come this far north and east, it'll have a lot of cold air to work with, while the early week threat can be a mix of snow, ice, and rain. If this were to come to fruition in the mid-Atlantic region, most likely an all-snow event. Let's go a little bit f forward here. You have that strong high across southeastern Canada. This is the latest version of the GFS by Thursday morning. It does indeed bring snow up into the D.C. metro region and an intensifying storm here. There will be a very strong wave aloft with this particular system. Then the snows uh, very hard across portions of Virginia, maybe just to the south and east of the D.C. metro region, but it's way too early to pinpoint uh, the exact placement of this. Six days ahead, we're talking about Thursday. Again, this system has a lot of potential, though, if it were to come to the uh, a little farther to the north, because A, it has a lot of cold air to work with, hence primarily a snow event, and B, it's got a lot of upper-level energy. It can intensify quite dramatically. So we'll be watching this closely next week. Uh, first, we have to deal with this uh, initial system in the late Monday into Tuesday time frame. Primarily snow and ice north of the Pennsylvania-Maryland border. Ice and rain 
maybe some snow south of the Pennsylvania Maryland border late Monday into Tuesday. The commute early Monday looks okay right at this point. We're again three days out from that system here. And stay tuned to PerspectiveWeather.com over the weekend for some updates. Again, two storms we'll have to monitor for next week. It looks quite likely there will be an impact from the early week storm in the mid-Atlantic region. A bit too far away to be certain about the late week storm threat. That's it for now for PerspectiveWeather.com. I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.